Wojak has gone into the city. We won't see him for some time. How do you know we will not see him for some time? Because he is wanting to look at things and he will end up in the marketplace. And then uh, he will be there. We. Trying to do deals. <sighs> trying to we. do more deals. We. And trying to do more deals. We, we, Savory. It's strange he didn't want me to go with him. I guess he has his own agenda that he wants to do. I believe he already had a camel. Is it me or does the big man have a barrel on his head? <laughs> he has sorry. a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> He does sound rather echoey. <laughs> it gives me a plus like, one to defense. Is this bucket you have <laughs> over your head? It does. It is but defensive. But you get negative one on your initiative. And charisma. <laughs> yeah, we've got to get back into that game. Anyway. We are not talking about buckets on heads. Uh, well, we are going into town as well, and I do not know when we will be back. It all depends on whether they arrest us or not. Don't be doing anything stupid. Uh, is it stupid to go and tell them that we are the ones that had a fight in the market? As that is what we are going to do. Oh, boy. I don't like this plan either, but... If we do not do it, they will come to the ship, they will find us anyway, and they will bother everybody else. I would rather go along with them. I'll just watch from a distance. I think that would be a good plan. Regardless, I will be coming with you. Then I suppose we should be going. You find a rather dark four-story building that looks somewhat unsympathetic. Uh, I think this seems much like the place. See. I am concerned that they may not understand us. I do not know if they will understand us. I can only hope that one of them will know one of the languages that we know. Otherwise, we are out of luck anyway. Being a poor town, they should have someone who can translate. Anyway, I would think so. See. Shall we go in? Anyway. Well, good luck, you two. I will hang out here <laughs> and keep a lookout. <laughs> uh, yeah. Trepien, uh, well, if we do not ever come back, then go back to the ship and I suppose tell them that we are, I do not know, dead. Disposed. We. Oui. I could do that. We'll, we'll just see what happens. Uh, try and stand near some windows. I do not know that we are going to have the opportunity to say, no, 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 we will have this conversation next to the window. Come over here. Just casually stand next to a window. Just begin walking and they will follow <sighs> you. Especially if they think you're criminals. If they think we are criminals, they will not casually follow us. They will clap us in irons. And if you're near a window, I will see that happen. Then we can organize some sort of rescue. Oh, goodness. We, we, whatever you say, we shall try. Uh, goodbye. Uh, Marguerite's walking Adelina up. will follow Marguerite in. Yeah, into the building. It is not locked. Great. 
It is a larger room. There are seats off to both left and right and a basic desk in the center. Is anyone behind the desk? There is. Great. Marguerite will walk up to the desk. And he starts to speak to you in a language you don't understand. At, at, at je ne compre, uh, She turns to Catalina. This is perhaps going to be a problem. Uh... He, unless this buffoon realizes that we do not speak his language. Avalonian? Montaigne? Uh, Vodace, Castilian, any, anything? He gets up and he walks to the back and a couple of minutes later he comes back with a different officer. Hello, can I help you? In Avalonian. Ah, ah, oui, oui. We are here to report an incident that occurred in the marketplace, which we were involved with. Ah. Uh, you're the foreigners. I suppose so. You must be detained. <laughs> that is hardly unexpected. You may leave the weapon here. That is fine as long as you promise not to throw it into the ocean. That is how I lost my first sword. We will not throw it into the ocean. Merci. And she will unbuckle it from her belt and leave it where indicated. Someone threw your last sword into the ocean? <sighs> and not exactly. They did not throw it into the ocean, but when I was on the first ship, that sink? Uh, it no, no, that is not true. When did I get that sword? Uh, I add it, and then oh, 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 oh! They did not take it into the ocean, but they took it from me, and then our ship sank, and so it was gone. Comprend? See. Si. Ah, ah, magnifique. Uh, so is this detaining? How does this work? You will be interviewed. And we will get to the bottom of the incident in question. Ah. Follow me. And he turns and walks down a passage. Marguerite will follow. And Catalina will hobble along behind Marguerite. Why is she hobbling? It was her arm that was hurt, not her leg. Oh, she's feeling a bit weak. <laughs> weak at the knees. She's lost a bit of blood. Just a bit. She needs to drink something. And he leads you into a room that's about 20 foot by 30 foot. And there's mm. a desk in the middle and a couple of chairs. Like three or four. Marguerite will sit in one of them. Catalina will gently sit into the other one and sort of lay her head on the table. And he pushes some paper and a quill and ink across towards you. And he says, please make your statement. Uh, written? Yes, please. Please. Oui. Uh, seeing as how Catalina is lying on the table, Marguerite will start writing. What happened? How do you wish me to recount this, or do you wish me to? No. Great. To... She writes down what happened. We got attacked, we defended ourselves, and that is it. Do not write that. Which? Which should I not write? I am just writing what happened. The man, he, f he fell on the dagger. <laughs> so you write that bit I was not involved With the dagger I uh, I hit one or two people with a sword But only the blunt end 
So, uh, and whenever we've got something down, she will push it back across the desk. And Por favor, senor. I cannot write because I am left handed. That is, I wrote it. It is fine. They did not say you write one and you write one, so I thought it was fine if just I write it. And he starts reading through it. I hope for your sake that you are not the instigators of this incident. Public disorder is not viewed upon favorably here. Why should and we come here and then just attack people without cause? Who understands the mind of a foreigner? And a head of a guard pops around the side and he whispers something. The other officer is showing a level of, a level of impatience. Quick sort of hissing discussion. And then he gets up. I will return. And he goes outside and closes the door and you hear it lock. Ah. We are locked in. So what do you think they are talking about? I do not know. But perhaps something a little more important than us. <laughs> Is there such a thing? <laughs> I may hope so. I, I kid. I have to say, ah, wait, that is not true. I was going to say I have never been arrested before, but I suppose this is the second time. And Catalina looks at Marguerite with a bit of a questioningly look. What? That is how I came to be on the ship we were all on. Well, this is one time, see, but... We oui, and this is does... the second. And this is now the second time. We. Oui. It has not been a habit of mine. I was actually hey. going to say, I wonder if this is going to become a habit of yours. <laughs> you can hear yelling, as in arguing. It doesn't sound like combat, but it does sound like a, uh, an angry exchange. Uh, they do not sound very happy. I am, to be honest, a little surprised. I thought they would be more concerned, but... Perhaps they do not think we could escape? A door? I think we should play it by ear. Let's just wait and see what happens. See. Very well. Then I suppose we shall just listen to these arguments we cannot understand. And a couple of minutes later, the door opens and two large individuals enter. They are armoured, have rather large curved scimitars, and are masked. Bonjour. Well, this is taking a particular turn. Oui. And then behind them comes another masked individual who is dressed in a very rich blue. And the blue individual walks up and sits down and picks up your statement and sits there and slowly begins to read through it. Ah, that is the best part. Right there, yes. Why are you in the Crescent Empire? To help someone. E. Who? Why does this matter? Catalina, we were sent by your friend. Are we at liberty to say? I do not know. This is up to you. Catalina sighs and puts her head back on the table. The police would like to quietly wrap up the matter. And who are you, if that is not what you wish? I work for the government. Look, the individual that we are here to help has been having trouble and is already facing harassment so you can see why we are hesitant to nothing is ever free no life is never fair it is the way of things we are here to help Elmas I soon 
and he looks at one of the guards who holds a book and you notice it glows just very very briefly and then he comes over and hands it to him and he opens it up the mathematician okay he no trouble with the law no trouble with the state by all accounts a respected scholar okay what does she need help with she is being threatened. Do you know why? We. Oui. She has made a mathematical discovery. Namely, she has discovered that someone else was wrong. And this male professor, he is very displeased with his discovery. Her discovery disproves the work of a very popular scholar who is uh, apparently revered. And so she has been receiving threats. And he closes the book and hands it out as the guard steps forward and takes it and puts it back under his robes. There is one, Yulvi Ibn Mahzun. He has a rather dim view of Elmas, by all accounts. He has been quiet for a little while. However, he did, several months previous, put forward a motion to have her removed from her position. Under what grounds? Villainy. I believe it was that she is wrong and is meddling in things that are better off not to be meddled in. He has some resources and some reputation, certainly enough to be able to apply some pressure. The thugs are a little heavy-handed, even for him, but panic does strange things. Her talents are certainly excellent. But many feel that her desire for truth is an obsession that blinds and binds her rather than reveals. Others feel that she is trying to understand that which only the deities should. That could be making her some enemies. Mazun has some loose ties to an organization that opposes the ruling party, and that interests me. They are known as the Open Hand and they are suspected of several violent incidents, but nothing has ever been proven. Those thugs, they are the kind of thing that the open hand has been known to use. Well, then this open hand should probably hire better thugs. I assume you do not want to spend several years in a Crescent Empire prison? Preferably no. I would like to see... The open hand delayed. And so if we can delay them for you, we do not end up in prison. We, this is how this goes. Yes, this is how this goes. And how do you wish them to be delayed? And he writes on a piece of paper. This is the address of his office at the university. You don't exactly blend in, but I would say search it. It may work towards your ends as well, if he is the one that is behind Elmas's issues. You may be fulfilling two agreements, not just one. And under what authority do we search it? When we show up and he says, get out, then we say... I would advise you to search it when he's not there. <sighs> we... Catalina's looking at Margarita's like, really? <laughs> she was wondering if he was going to tell them that since they work for the government, we can say that we're allowed because they <laughs> oh, said. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Yeah. Then we may go and attempt to complete your assignment. You may. Magnifique. Uh, then, Catalina, are you ready? Well, if we are no longer detained here, we will head back to the ship. 
at back to the ship. Then Marguerite will collect her sword on the way out. Bonjour. I see you were not arrested. Well done. Ah, we were. And oh. if we do not do the job we have been given now, we shall go to prison for many years. They say. We are doing two jobs now. Well, Catalina said she wished to go back to the ship, so I suppose we shall go there and then tell you what it is we have to do. And yes, she will need to change. We all need new clothes if we're going to blend in here. It is not possible for us to blend in here, even if we change our clothes. We do not speak the language. We do not look as though we belong. It is not going to happen. And I think we are walking back to a ship. Catalina, you need to change. Fenric, you are not bringing your accordion where we are going. Catalina, once you are changed, I suppose we can fill this one in. Now yeah, I'm wondering if we should uh, not at least try and uh, adopt some cover. Of what kind? I noticed some of the women. We could use robes to partially describe our features. To describe them? Describe them? Well, that is sort of what I was thinking. Well, do you do have money to buy these things? What? What was your objection to it? Is that anybody who listens to us will know we do not live here. Sure. Or anyone who speaks to us. We will not be able to answer them. So I think the important yeah. thing is not to speak to anybody. Ever? Ever. Then I suppose we have to go quickly. However, before we go to any market, we should tell you what it is that we are planning to do. There is a man who does not like Elmas, who is who we are helping, if you recall. And mm -hmm. anyway, he tried to get her removed from her position. And so the one who interrogated us, who says he is from the government, said that this man... Mazun, uh, he may be behind these threats and also he has some ties to a group called the Open Hand. And we are to search his office in order to discover if this is the case. And if we do this and we find something that is helpful to the government, then we do not go to jail for forever. And if we don't find anything... As then we go to jail for forever? I do not know. Just you, though. You didn't tell them about me, right? Um... Not exactly? I wrote down that we were attacked in the marketplace. I did not give a list of names. However, if anyone has spoken to them about it, they may have said there were more than two. I could not say. However, it is also the fact that Catalina threw our statement away, so... So then, what is our plan of attack? Get in when he is not there, and do not be caught. So, we will have to stake out the place then, yes? Or cause the distraction? Well, I assume he does not work all night, no? All right, be quick, and then we can be on our way. All right, well, Catalina's is going to go below and get dressed into something light. And whenever she gets back, I guess we're back to the market to buy clothes. Then I guess we'll find, buy, and change into normal-looking clothes. This is the address of the office that I was given. It's getting to be nighttime, I suppose. Hopefully, they've already left and gone home. I suppose we shall go and see. It looks like a university overall. 
it's sort of like multiple multitude of uh, you know like buildings over there which certainly seem to be the learning one and added administration buildings on the other side and it looks like it's going to be one of the ad administration okay and are there a lot of people around the university there is a few. sort of okay there's a few you don't exactly stand out, but you don't exactly blend in. You're sort of somewhere in between. <laughs> I think, well, I guess it depends. Are there people with Fenrix body type around in this city? Not as many. Not as many. You're very unique. Well, now that we are here, what is it we should do? We could just walk in and act like we belong. That only works for the time until someone says, Hello, who are you? Why are you here? And we just stare at them in silence as we cannot answer without being very obvious. Is there perhaps a side door? One that's less conspicuous, less trafficked? Unless you have any better ideas? I will take that silence as a no. Uh, I'm just trying to think <laughs> how. I've never had to break into anywhere with and I do not mean to make offense at this but with people that are not as skilled <laughs> in the art of subterfuge. I am skilled in the art of subterfuge, just not in the sneaking part. And which art of subterfuge are you skilled in, then? Uh, deception. And how are, how are you deceptive? With my performance skills. Being a performer requires more than just playing an instrument. You have to have a certain charisma about you. One that people just tend to trust. Well, is it better to walk in and hope nobody notices or wait a little bit longer and see if everybody clears out when it is later? Or... I do not know. Mm, the second part. Then that is what we shall do. Alright. I don't mind waiting. I don't know how quiet it will be at night time, but later in the night. I will use panache and perform as my approach. And how's that gonna get you in secretly? Um, when we are inevitably discovered by people passing by, um, instead of trying to like hide, scamper out of the way, he's going to smile, nod at them, uh, kind of make them feel confident that we know what we're doing, where we're going, uh, kind of put on a, a show in a way. Uh, I would like to use wits and hide to pay attention to the spots where people are least likely to notice me going and go there. I'm going to use panache and scholarship because I'm going to use my Scholarly. Again. Scholarly. 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 Uh, knowledge. And she's going to uh, uh, basically walk in as if she knows uh, where she is going. Catalina looks at the pair of you and turns and heads off with a confident trot um, as she walks along she spies uh, two people talking uh, books down there's a few books on the um, uh, the sitting bench and as Catalina walks past she uh, quickly bends over and picks them up and continues to walk without them uh, really having noticed what she's what she's done after Catalina has left, uh, Marguerite, who has been 
paying attention specifically to where students and faculty have not been walking is going to make her way over to the office trying to stick to the areas that are less traveled to reduce the chances of anybody saying who are you and why are you here. And it does take her a little longer because she's not taking as direct a route as the ones who are simply trying to fit in and act as though they belong, but she does eventually make her way to the office as well. And Fenric is uh, going to walk confidently uh, through the uh, kind of courtyard leading up to the building. Um, And as people kind of look at him as he passes, he gives them a nod, a bit of a wave, and keeps walking. Uh, They don't seem to be questioning too much. When he gets into the building... um, there's uh, someone at a desk writing some papers, and they look up when he enters. They make eye contact, and a confused expression appears on their face. And they get up and they, they leave. And Fenner continues walking towards the office. And have we all met back up at the office? Yes, because you know where it is. So yes, all I right. assume so. Yeah. All right, then here we all are. <sighs> it is a very neat and organized office. It smells of tobacco. There is many books that are in bookcases. A large desk. That is enough enough time for chit-chat. We must find something here. Anything that is of relevance to either of the things we are supposed to be doing now. Oh, Catalina will head towards the big desk. And Marguerite will start looking through bookshelves. Everyone roll a d10. You got it. I... Maybe found something here. And what is that? It appears to be a ledger written in Avalonian. Uh, it seems to be coded. Some sort of coded message, but from what I can gather, it's expenses. But it's kind of... The way it's written, it makes it seem like it's under the table. I guess... Maybe this is what the... Yes, perhaps this is how the professor had got in contact with the open hand, and maybe this is a record of those payments. Avalonian, I have a note here. In Avalonian, it is a place and time for a meeting, which is tomorrow. If we take that, he would probably notice it's missing. Uh, however, if we do not take it, we have nothing to give to the individual who will lock us up if we do not give things to him, so... Can you copy down the details? I could, but then it is not the original, it is just something I have written. Well, when he shows up to the place, then you'll be proven... Accurate to give that information. It will not take long to verify. Do we care if he knows we have taken things? It does not matter if he knows things are gone, does it? Well, he might not show up to the place if the the piece of paper with it written on is gone. Where did you find this piece of paper? On the bookshelf. Well, this is interesting. And she flicks the page. At the bottom of each page is a hand, and and she keeps flicking and flicking and flicking. And the and hand is opening. It is more open as each page goes on. See? It's 
like a moving picture. So what does that mean? Well, we know it is the open end, but... Well, Fenric thinks we should leave these things here. I think it probably does not matter much if we take them. What do you think? We should perhaps be at the BT address tomorrow. Oh, I am sure we should. However, the question is, do we take these as proof or do we leave them? I think I can take the ledger. It was kind of filed away. You probably wouldn't notice it was missing until... Uh, well, until we probably caught him. Unless he is supposed to bring it to the meeting. That would be strange. How do you know? We do not know what this meeting is for. The letter that you have, is it assigned to him? No. So then he can just deny that it would... It does not belong to him. Does the ledger have his name on it? It does, yeah. It has... Uh, like, information of transactions between him and... Uh, I can't... Fine, fine. It's coded, I can't quite tell who, but... As then, if you bring that, I shall leave this ear if you wish. See? I was just thinking, because he will likely need that piece of paper tomorrow to get to the place, if he does not know the location by heart. If he needs to remind himself of the time... Or whatnot. It's more likely he will need that. See, I think Fenric is right on this run. Is there anything else that I think we can find from here, or should we get out of here before someone catches us? I did not see anything else, however, we Almost, could take a quick look at you. Leave. Then let us go. Then tomorrow we go to the meeting. Uh, we have nothing else to follow up on, we? Uh, did it say what kind of meeting it was? Or was it just a meeting time and uh, Just place? a time and a date. Uh, sorry. Just a time and a place. Should we perhaps bring this to the police? No, it is not the police that we are working for as of now. Well, who is it? The government. And he said that we do not need to find him when we are done. See? I, I see. Okay. Uh, so, what I'm hearing is we have no backup, and if we fail, they'll just deny everything. Oui. See? But of course. Mm, such is his life. Right. All right. So, where is this meeting place? It is a building. I have the address. We go back to the ship. All right. Well, it's the next day. Catalin is almost pondering. Almost pondering or is pondering? <laughs> She's almost considering pondering. pondering. She's considering about to ponder. <laughs> will I Thinking ponder or, or will I not? Thinking whether. <laughs> so shall we go and see where this meeting is to be? Or is there she anything else? No? There is nothing that I need to do. Then let us go. And we shall go. And off we go. All right, so we were talking about waiting to see if people showed up. Close to the allotted time, an individual comes down the street in a big cloak. Mm -hmm. And he's holding a lantern so he can see where he is going. 
and he goes up to the house and he looks both ways down the street and he looks to be about 60 and then he goes inside is that the professor ah well you see i did realize after that we do not know what this man looks like no right so hmm I suppose the only course of action is to get inside and see what they are talking about. I mean, if you think you can climb up there, you can try. I know I can't. Yes, I don't think I could climb all the way up there, but if you two want to give it a shot, I won't stop you. I will try to climb. If it is... Well the best way. There is the matter of the, the guards on the ground. Well, we're not going to climb up the wall of the house in question. And Catalina looks around and she darts off into the darkness. Alright, Marguerite will follow her. Rick just kind of shakes his head but jogs after. This is going to be a terrible experience. I so saw we could climb up this lattice work that has the vines on it and then cross over and she's pointing up to a, a drain pipe that... Oui, oui. Is that is possible? I will try. You think this lattice can support my weight? And then it kind of pulls on some of the vines. I do not know. How do you know until you try? Eh? You should go first, both of you. Oui, oui. Fair. Well, Fenric is going to use Resolve and Athletics. She so it takes a bit of a leap, hits the latticework a few feet up, and starts crawling up using the vines quite deftly, and uh, jumps across to the, uh, the drain pipe, uh, lands on the balcony next to the open window into the candlelit room to see the face of a man who's staring back at her wide-eyed. Uh, Marguerite, who went second, is basically following behind Catalina, not quite as quickly. And Fenric, who hasn't started yet, can see that she is clinging to the vines, much like she would uh, cling to the ropes while climbing ship's rigging. She jumps across, not quite as deftly to the drain pipe but does manage to from there leap over to the balcony and is surprised to notice that uh well we're already spotted immediately upon arrival and Fenric is giving himself a bit of a pep talk at the bottom of the lattice alright you can do this Fenric one foot in front of the other. And he he grabs some of the vines and wraps them around his wrist for each uh, like hand hold as he moves up the lattice. Uh, it takes him probably twice as long to get to the top. Individual who has a scimitar and is covered in robes <laughs> yells something that you're not sure what it is, but... It could well be something like intruder, or it wouldn't be just like alarm, but you don't speak the language, but it's quite possible that it was something along the line of intruders. I don't know why I thought you were going to say covered in blood. <laughs> and Fenric, just as he starts to haul his head over the top, he Jeez. hears yelling. <laughs> oh, that's not good. And he's going to kind of roll over, flopping face up on top of the, the roof, panting out of breath. Catalina reaches around behind her, grabs the handle of a dagger, and flicks it at the the man inside the room. Really? I thought we were going to not kill everyone here? Catalina looks at Marguerite. He was making noise. Oh, wait. However, you could, I don't know, it him on the head? 
he is not making noise now. And she ching draws out her rapier. You both hear a large thump on the roof as something heavy hits the roof. And then you hear, oh, oh, as Fenric begins rolling off the sloped roof. He then, uh, you see him fall past the open window, uh, and his hand has just grabbed the open window, and he manages to pull himself up. Well, this is going well. I am never doing that again. (laughs) Adelina dives into the room and pulls the dagger out of the, the man on the floor, and he's... And Marguerite is listening to see if anybody appears to be running to where we are. I am spending a danger point, and it is silent. I do not hear anyone else. That seems more suspicious. Well, we cannot simply leave. Well, Catalina so... will peer out into the hallway. Marguerite's following Catalina. I suppose we should check throughout the house? Yes. Henrik's going to look around this room first. Is it like... I don't know. Have you described the room at all? Nope. Because the plan went to hell before you really got in there, so... <laughs> yep. Um, it, the house is in disarray, 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 disrepair, so it's not... <laughs> um, it does not appear to be lived in. You know, this is the room they just keep for someone to sit in in case anyone climbs through the window. Mm. And they have a guard stationed. Yeah. Of course. Uh, it might have been a long time ago a house, possibly, or an office of some description. It's it's hard to tell because there's no furniture on this on this floor. Each room is empty. It's a bit dusty. I think we need to go downstairs, however. Catalina will dart up to the next doorway then. Two stairs leading down to the second floor. Marguerite will quietly descend some stairs. Henrik is going to take one more look at the the dead guy. Sorry, buddy. Wrong place, wrong time, I guess. And he will head after them. Second floor is empty. And we're going to descend to the first floor then. Quietly. And there is flickering candlelight or lantern light from the next room. Uh, Marguerite's going to listen to see if she can hear anything now that we are two floors down. No. She does not. Do you think they left the building? They heard us? Adelaide will peer into the room. And there's two seats and a lantern. Well, that is... I do not even know what that is. Uh, They could have left, I suppose, however... We did not hear the door open. No. We were three floors up. Two. Yes, we're two floors above the first floor. Three. Which is three floors from the ground. No. We were on the roof. You may have been on the roof. We were not. Doesn't matter. They're either hiding or they're gone. All right, Catalina will step into the room and... (laughs) And make herself known. Start stabbing the cushions. Oh, dear. Look around. Marguerite will follow. And it is empty. Apart from the guy you saw arriving. Who is Ah. in one of the chairs. Staring at the ceiling with a red patch on his chest. Uh, Well, that does not appear good. It seems that perhaps the... Uh, open hands 
heard our commotion and assumed this man had betrayed them. To open up the guy's robes where he was, where there's a red patch. Single stab wound to the hut. He is still sitting in his chair, so he did not expect a fight. They just stabbed him. They could have planned to stab him all along, and the meeting was not real, and it was a uh, setup. However, it is also possible they stabbed him because they heard us come in, although I think it would be a little bit odd to assume that he had betrayed them simply because someone had broken in. Oh, these people do not seem like the patient type. The open hand? How do you know? Because they stabbed someone? Well, yes. They jumped us in an open market. They could have waited for us to go back to where we were staying, or get us on the docks where there's less people, or any other place, but they did it right in the middle of the market. Assassins do not like to be betrayed. Does anyone like to be betrayed? Well, an assassin is more likely to stab you in the heart <laughs> when you do betray them. And oh. this old fool was just unfortunate to be dealing with such people. I suppose we should look around the rest of this floor and see if we find anything to give to the government official, whoever that one is. And Catalina whispers to the guy, if you do play with fire, you've got to expect to be burnt. He does not answer. Basically, Marguerite is looking for anything that looks like it would be of interest to a strange, shadowy government figure that's like, find me proof of things, or go to jail forever. They did not take his money. Yet. Well, it does not seem there is anything else here, so I suppose we should leave. I do not Think there is anything else here? Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder if the cards are still out front. Or if they've I do left not know. Well. Hopefully, we do not get accused of this killing either. The outy guards will be out the front. Nonetheless, and with a rapier drawn and a dagger in her right hand, she heads out through the front door. Street is empty. <sighs> I was going to warn her of the appearance of leaving a house with two dead bodies in it with drawn weapons. However, Marguerite will walk outside as well. As will Fenric. The man who spoke to us said we would not need to find him. So, do we just wait? Or do we leave? And go to the ship and hope no one arrests us? We could. Or we could go back to uh, the lady who this man was that is what i was thinking all right then we go there all right we'll go to her house and knock and she is home uh uh hello good evening may we come in and she moves out of the way all right marguerite will go in elena will follow well, fun, right? So we have perhaps an update there. Well. <laughs> was he the professor that was bothering you? She did not know who was. It was anonymous letters and things. However, we had cause to believe perhaps it was uh, this professor um, Amazon. He was not my greatest uh, admirer. No. Uh, he was involved with some dangerous people, and he is, well, he is no longer an admirer of anything. So, if it was indeed him, he will no longer trouble you. What do you mean? Here's he met an unfortunate end at the hands of someone he was... In, uh, someone he was dealing with. He's dead? So Did it he? would appear. 
I did not want him to die over this. We did not kill him. And I do not believe it was over th- th- this. He was... He had business dealings with dangerous sorts. Here. I see. And Fenric produces the ledger. This is an account of some of the business transactions he had with these shady people. It's encrypted, but uh, from what I can gather, he would meet people and uh, conduct business with them. As normal people do. <laughs> that doesn't sound As the normal most shady do, so far. <laughs> but it's <Jeez>. very shady. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was conducting business. The way he wrote it? it down in this book I was so suspicious. Were you giving her he, the ledger? Uh, uh, I would hand it to her, but not necessarily in a. You own this now. More like have a look at it. And she flicks through, and she says, "There's definitely mathematical code here." Do you know what it means? In time. Decipher it better than I could. However, we still do need to give it to, you know, whoever that was. We have to give it to someone or we go to jail. Eh? It was a man from the government. Oui. It is definitely a ledger. He is creative with where some of the money was going and what it was being expended on. If it is the government, they should be able to decipher the code that he was using would you like to would you like to come with us and perhaps not particularly uh, no i do not know why she would i am just a mathematician this was a important to me but largely a petty grievance i had nothing to do with people dying or shady dealings as you put it I think it's usually better to stay away from government officials whenever possible. We. Oui. Yes, we don't have that luxury, unfortunately. Well, you do. You do not have to speak to them if you do not wish. I do not uh, think. That's true. And Fenric will hand you the ledger. <laughs> I was going to say, Fenric will leave. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to the ship. Right. I'm have a drink. Good luck. <laughs> All right, Marguerite will take the ledger. If I don't uh-huh. see you again, it was nice meeting you. We are sorry for the fact that this... Well, although I suppose it was not connected, however, the outcome of the other matter was not what you would have wanted. I guess we should go back to the ship and wait for the government man. Uh, we? Oui? Unless there is anything else we can do for you? No, that's uh, everything. Uh, like, I please do not offer been... to do anything for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we, it's, and we shall take our leave. Well, we're going back to the ship. We'll go back to the ship, and I guess we'll wait in port until the government official arrives. Well, I guess we'll wait for someone to contact us, and if they never do, we'll just leave. The following day, official comes with a letter. Do you give them the uh, ledger? Uh, yep. Marguerite yep. will since Fenric gave it to her. And they give you the letter and leave. And she will open the letter. It is a pardon and says never return to the Crescent Empire. Oh. <laughs> I think we've been banished. Uh, eh. Hey. First of all, you have not been banished. This is for us too. You were not ever arrested. Secondly, uh, you so you can come back anytime you wish, I suppose. Um, e. Secondly, we are pardoned. So, hooray, hooray. We are free to leave. And that afternoon, the ship leaves on the tide. Wojak has remained in the Crescent Empire. What is this Wojak think he is doing? He sent us a message. The past beckons. And we take this to mean? He will make his own way back. Is that wise? Probably not. (sighs) 
Well, Don't worry, just... Marguerite. We will probably find him on another prison ship. <laughs> it is his decision, I suppose. See, I, I am not convinced that he won't get himself into trouble on his own. Uh, none of us are convinced of that. He will certainly get himself into trouble. I would yes. bet money. Then I suppose we shall go. I hope he can make his own way back, as we have been asked to never return. So, we cannot come back and <laughs> collect him. Uh, perhaps there is more to this than meets the eye. To Wojek? Um, no, to what happened in the Crescent Empire. I am sure there is more that we do not know. We do not know why he was killed. We do not know many things, however... I do not think we are going to find out. 7C. Starring Emily as Marguerite, Shadow as Fenric, Raven Insane as Catalina, and introducing Louis as Wojak, Ghost as the Teller of Stories. 7C is released by Chaosium Games and written by John Wick. Some of the sounds come from Sirenscape.com. You can find us at Critfail.com. In the middle of the night, I'm cooking away, cooking, 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 cooking chicken, adding some peas, and in goes a carrot, cooking, cooking, cooking some chicken, chicken and corn, chicken and corn, but it's got peas and carrots as well. <laughs>